Budget 2024. What happens? How's it impacting our property businesses? Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. On the 6th of March 2024, Jeremy Hunt delivered our most recent budget. So what are the implications? What's happened? How's it going to impact our property businesses? Well, let's start with the personal tax side of things and just have a chat through what is happening and how it's fitting together. From a personal tax point of view, all the tax bans are staying the same. There is no changes there. This kind of just means that we're probably going to be paying more taxes going forward as hopefully income increases. It's going to take us more over those tax bans and into the different tax rates. So tax rates haven't changed, bans haven't changed. So as the cost of things does go up, we are unfortunately going to be seeing higher tax bills. For Welsh residents, things are going to be similar to the English and Northern Irish population with tax rates being similar. But the Scottish residents, you now have six different tax rates ranging from 19 to 48% depending on your income. So there is a few tweaks there, but similar sort of approach that unfortunately taxes are going up for all of us as individuals. I do like to remind people about the marriage allowance and that is still in place. So if you have got one person who is working and one person who isn't working, then make sure you're making use of the marriage allowance just to say it's only 250 pounds of uh, money. But obviously these days, every little is helping. So if you have got that scenario in your household, make sure you are ticking the marriage allowance box to get a little more money into your household. Tax on savings, tax on dividend income hasn't particularly changed in the budget. We were always going down to the 500 dividend allowance as of the 24-25 tax year. That has not been altered. So taking money out of your companies is going to get a little more expensive than it used to be. So if you have been making use of that allowance from your property company, just be aware that it's going down from 1,000 in the current tax year to 500 in the 24-25 tax year and going forward. So again, it's just ways of maximizing the tax take that the government are getting. And it just means we may need to be doing a little more tax planning to help minimize where we can any tax liabilities that everyone is paying. Pension tax limits have been abolished at this point in time. We will see what a new election does, whether we have any changes to that going forward. But we are going to be entering a period that if you have got good profits in your property business, it may be a good time to be using the pension allowances, depending what your pension pot is sitting at, and putting money into pensions to help mitigate any corporation tax, any income tax, and making use of the allowances that are in place. Obviously, there are options like SASAs, so it does still keep that money under your control to be investing and doing things with, but there is some pension planning that may be useful depending what your property businesses are doing and how it's all stacking together. ISAs have remained relatively consistent, but it is worth just mentioning that they're bringing in a new ISA for British businesses, which if you have got extra funds that you're generating from your property businesses, may be a good way to be putting that money somewhere where it is not going to be within the tax rules and a way of maximizing any additional savings that you do have, which may be used in the future for future property investments. I'm pleased to report with the high income child benefit charge that there's some, been some real positive moves forward on this one. For anyone out there who has got children whose income was over 50,000, you're pretty scuppered and you couldn't be claiming the child benefit, or if you were, you were going to be starting to pay back. That has been increased to 60,000 now. So anyone who was in that gap of over 50,000 to 60 was going to be losing it. Now that has gone up to 60,000. So anyone whose salary or any income that they're receiving from whether it be property or whether it be from salaried jobs, you can now get the child benefit up to 60,000 and you don't lose it all now until you hit 80,000. So anyone out there who hasn't been claiming child benefit because they're over the limits, 
please get yourself sorted, get your claims in to get the child benefit. A real positive move forward is that they are now starting to look at it on a household basis rather than on an income per person basis, which is great for those single income families to be claiming this benefit, which their um, contemporaries were able to claim if two salaries were under the amount, but one salary was over. So this is a great move forward to really help families. And if you have children, make sure you're making the most of this to just get that extra little bit of money into your household, whether that's helping for the children or whether that helps for the investment side of things. It's just a great way to help boost the household's income. I couldn't do this video without mentioning national insurance as we have yet again had some reductions in the national insurance rates. Now, the reason that it's gone for reductions in the national insurance rates rather than the tax rates is because this is only impacting employees. So any of those employee investors out there, you're going to be getting more money in your pay packet. Any of the self-employed people, you are gonna, again, be getting more money in your pay packet or not paying as much to the tax man with the reduction in the national insurance limits. The reason they've gone down this approach is because it only affects employed or self-employed. If they change the tax rates, it impacts us as investors as well. And they didn't want us as investors to be getting a lower tax rate. So that's the reason that it's the national insurance that's been cut. If as a property company or property investor, you do have employees, this is going to help your employees. Unfortunately, it's not going to be helping you as the employer as they've not made any changes to the national insurance for employers at this point in time. An area they have extended is the tax reliefs available for employing veterans. So if you are employing a veteran in your property business, then this will um, be cheaper on the national insurance. But obviously, because we're approaching April, the national minimum wage has increased again. So just make sure if you have got any employees that you are paying them the appropriate salary to fit with the national minimum wage rates. Let's move on to company cars. And all the company car rates have been frozen for a while and they will continue to be frozen. However, it is worth noting, if you have an electric car, which I know some people have gone down that route, the benefit on having a company car has now started to go up. So it has been 2% over the last year or so. That is going up to 3%, 4% and 5% over the next couple of tax years. So it's still a very cheap benefit to have an electric car through your property company. However, the benefit is going up a little bit um, over the next couple of years. If you want to find out more about company cars, check out the video on company cars, which explains how it all fits together so you can just understand what you need to be aware of for if you are considering getting a company car. Company vans, they have confirmed the company van benefits and check out the information on the channel in the community section where you can download a copy of the full budget brief that Shackrot's accountants have put together. Company taxes, let's have a look. Now, from a corporation tax point of view, they've not really done anything. So anyone with a property company, there's been no changes with the current budget. It has been very limited. The main area that they've extended is the full expensing side of things, which is to do with capital allowances, which works for certain property businesses like the serviced accommodation companies, but for general property companies, we're still on the domestic replacement relief for any replacement items and capital allowances doesn't really apply. So unless you're in the commercial space or the serviced accommodation, the, the changes with the full expensing is probably not really of any interest to you. Furnished holiday lets is probably one of the big ones that was mentioned in the budget. And this one, they have basically abolished the separate rules for how furnished holiday lets are going to be treated. But that's about as much as we know at this point in time. So I will be doing a future video on furnished holiday lets and how this impact will change things. The key questions that we have at the moment are how it is going to fully work. They've already confirmed that they've basically abolished the showing it separately on your tax return, which means that now anyone with furnished holiday lets is going to be potentially impacted 
by section 24, which before they weren't. So that is quite a significant impact for anyone in that area. Now, other areas that we've not quite got clarification on are things like capital allowances on your furnished holiday letting, VAT side of things, they've not mentioned at all at this point. There is capital gains tax allowances and inheritance tax implications. All of these aspects, we have not really got any information or concrete information on yet. So that area we will be clarifying shortly as soon as we have more information to know exactly what is going to be the impact for those who are in this sector. As far as we are aware so far, this is for anyone doing it in their own name. Anyone in a company, there's not been any mention at this point of being impacted by any changes with the furnished holiday letting side of things. Making Tax Digital has not had any mention in great part and based on with where we are, everything is going to be going ahead for 2026. This means anyone with property income over the 50,000 threshold will be falling into Making Tax Digital on April 2026. Anyone over 30,000 will be going in in April 2027 and anyone under that, we need clarification still on what will be happening for anyone over 10,000 up to 30, depending what is happening at that point in time. So that side of things with the smaller property portfolios, we're probably a little uncertain with one, two, three maybe. Anyone with three or four is definitely going to be fitting into the Making Tax Digital in their own names. So that one will keep updated and as things change, um, keep an eye on the channel as we know more information as those dates are getting closer. Business rates is probably just a quick one to mention as they have been frozen again and there is still some of the reliefs available that were introduced over the last couple of years. So for anyone who is on the business rate side of things, that's great news because hopefully that is just keeping costs down to a minimum with everything else ever increasing. It's just a good way to keep things hopefully stable for your property business. Moving on to capital gains tax, and this is an area we did see a little movement. Not a lot of movement, but some movement. Now we know the allowances are going down to 3,000 from the 6th of April 2024. That has not been changed, that is still the same. However, they have reduced the capital gains tax rate for higher rate taxpayers who are selling property. It was 28%, it is now 24%. So this hopefully is just, I think, an indication from the budget speech that they're trying to persuade people who are those higher earners that if they've got property, that actually, yes, please do sell them. We want you to be paying that tax is what they're wanting. But hopefully that's giving a little movement in the industry. So if you are looking for properties from maybe a retiring landlord, maybe now will be the time to sell for them. And maybe there may be some stock that you can be getting at a good price as they're going to be saving that little bit extra tax as well. Inheritance tax, there is pretty much no update, no changes, but that's probably an update in itself because we keep hearing the rumblings that inheritance tax is going to be removed or abolished, but no, it is still there. So we still need to be making sure we're doing the appropriate planning for your inheritance tax to ensure that it's minimizing any inheritance tax that is payable on any estate that you, have, that you are leaving behind. A few final other bits then. VAT, the threshold is going up to 90,000 and the deregistration is going up to 88,000. Not necessarily going to impact many property businesses, it's mainly those that are in sourcing and those that are in the serviced accommodation field and maybe the odd commercial person. So not a really a big impact, but just something to be aware of if you are in that space that you've got a little longer before you need to be registering. And the final, I say big hitter, it's not really a big hitter. The final impact that we have to mention today is stamp duty. And this is where they are abolishing the multiple dwellings relief allowance. This is basically where you're buying multiple properties at the same time and you can get a minimized stamp duty bill. This is used for very specific transactions. So it will impact some people who are buying landlords out and other things. But for many people who are just buying one property at a time, it's going to have absolutely no impact. 
There are other options. So if you are buying multiple properties and you're buying over six properties, you may be able to get this on commercial stamp duty rates on the basis you're buying a business rather than properties and it's non-commercial in treatment. So on that basis, there may be other reliefs that can be used or other ways to work with the people you're buying things off to make it work for you. But this one is just one that is potentially a simplification of the stamp duty system, removing a relief that is available for those who may have been using it. It may have some impact. To find the full details, please check out the community section of the channel and you can get the link to the Shap Courts newsletter. I'll also put that in below so that you can also click on the link to get that as well. And that just puts it all in writing in details of everything that has been impacted in the budget this March. We'll see what happens later in this year. We are expecting probably at least one other budget this year before the end of the year as we've got an election approaching. Whether that will be the new government or the existing government, we shall see. Hopefully today you've discovered exactly how the budget is going to impact you and how it makes a difference in your property business. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, please like the video and do subscribe to the channel. And let's make tax less taxing.